Hello and welcome to our tour of our brand new test facility here in Kaskuna, Sweden. So today we are going to show you uh, what this is all about, uh, what we have here and what we can do. And with me I have my great colleague Robert Colvin. He is our device and hardware expert. Cheers. Uh, yeah, my name is Rob Colvin. I am a hardware developer and uh, IoT engineer. My role here with Telenor is, is to assist our customers with their hardware development and testing and obviously to run the test facility that we have here today. We will have a walkthrough so that you can see uh, how it looks like and what's in it. We can show a test case. Uh, how it's run, and then we will talk a little about how the process works and how to get access to the lab. Let's start talking about why it is important to do testing with IoT devices. So, of course, wherever you develop, it's very important to do test and verify that the quality is good before it hits the customer. Uh, but in IoT, it's even more important. It could be hundreds of thousands of devices that should be deployed and sent out. And then it's really, really crucial that the quality is good. What type of uh, network technologies do we have? Yeah, so obviously with the 2 and 3G sunset coming up, we're, we're looking at how we can work with that. So we offer 2 and 3G still, uh, even though it's going to be sunset. We also have 4G that we want to move towards to replace 2 and 3G. And being IoT focused, we're looking very clearly at LTM uh, and MBIT within 4G. Um, but we also have obviously higher categories, Cat1+. Plus. Um, but looking to the future as well, obviously, 5G is coming. Um, so we're offering 5G capabilities down here. We're very fortunate, though, is that we have um, multiple operators here. So not just Sweden, right? So we have, we have Norway, mm. we have uh, Denmark, and we have Finland as well. So if you come into the cage and we set Norway up, you'll even get that text message that says, welcome to Norway, which makes finding yeah. my iPhone a little cranky sometimes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's because we're part of the Telenor group that we have access to those partners, mm. right? So not everybody can offer those multiple international operators in one test facility. Talking about what we can do in the lab, we are doing verification. Yeah. We do not do certification yet. Absolutely, right? Um, and, and that's because there's a lot that is involved in certification that we are not able to do um, from a regulatory basis, essentially, right? So. What we want to do is make sure that your device works as you expect it to do, right? And that might be pre-certification work, right? So this leads up to certification, but it's not the certification itself. Talking about the benefits while you're testing, we mentioned before that you would like to do this as early as possible so you can save money, but it's not only finding faults and stuff like that. It's also optimizing your device, I guess. IoT devices have to work by themselves in some of the most horrific conditions. They might be buried six feet under with water pipes and all sorts of things going on. They're remotely deployed. There's no one to go and restart them. They have to be reliable and they have to be reliable for the entire lifetime of the devices, right? So it's important that before you deploy a device into field, you know what you're going to get, right? And you want to have a baseline of performance. You want to have an, a, an expectation of what will happen in various situations. So with the test facility here, we can replicate a whole number of situations that your device might find itself in the real world and you'll get to know, hey, yep, my device works here, here, and not here. Okay, cool. That's my performance envelope. It's not only under perfect conditions. Normally, when we're talking about test labs, you have some kind of simulator, but here uh, we have real base stations, real antennas, yep. and we can also uh, set at what power uh, the signal is, I guess. Yeah, so an IoT device is a perfect dance between the, the hardware itself, um, the antennas, but the SIM card and the network as well, mm -hmm. right? And you, we've got to get all of those and understand the impact of each of them, right? So if you are typically testing with a simulated base station, you are bypassing what the impact of the SIM card is, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot that the SIM card controls. Whereas you come to our facility, you'll see how your device works on a real base station with a real SIM card. So what is a radio cage? Yeah, um, a Faraday cage simply is a way that we can block radio signals um, and isolate devices. Um, our cage here is um, specially designed for cellular IoT testing, right? So it, it will block all cellular signals across the bands that we're interested in. Um, so anything that happens inside the cage won't come out, and equally anything that's happening outside the cage won't come in. So what we get inside the cage for testing is a very well controlled radio environment. All the operators that are out here in the main room aren't going to impact us inside, mm. okay? But we mentioned earlier that we have not just Telenor Sweden here, we have Telenor Norway, Denmark, and Finland. 
And we don't want to bring those operators out of the cage into, obviously we're in Sweden here, right? So we can do a lot of really complex testing here. Um, and, and when we get inside the cage, we're going to talk about it a little more. Um, but essentially we can automate a lot of testing inside the cage. What that means is that we can run testing when we're not even here, um, but we have other people who might access the room and we want to make sure that nothing interrupts our testing. So at the moment we're green, that means we've got a clear radio that we can have the door open and it's not going to cause an issue. It means we're not testing. So feel free to open the door, walk in. Let's head in into the cage. Thick door. Absolutely. So we mentioned a couple of times that we've got the four operators. So we bring those into the cage and we need an antenna and we group them one operator per antenna essentially. Okay, so we have Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Finland. We have Wi-Fi, we have cabled internet here as well. A couple of weeks ago, we added location services in here. So that means if your device is dependent on GPS signals for, for whatever it might be doing, it might be, you know, robotic lawnmowers or what have you, we have the location services in here. Now we've talked about the cellular signal and, and we'll dig into a little bit more when we, we go further, but they come in through an attenuator system. Right, so we can take the signal from the base station and we can tune it up or down as we want. Um, we can do the same with the location services, with the GPS. So we can simulate that, hey, maybe you've got a lack of uh, signal quality on your GPS. What does your device do in that case? Yeah. Can it pick it up from the Wi-Fi? Can it pick it up from the cellular or what have you, right? So it's just another test case that we can do in the cage. On our rack here, yeah, we have six screens. So what do they all do? So the bottom two, this is typically our interface to the network signaling. So our logging of how your device is signaling through the core. On the right here, um, we have other interfaces that might be to test devices. This might be to um, other reporting systems. So it's just another way for us to control the radios, control the base stations. Top left, today we're showing the service portal, but this is available for customer usage for whatever they might want to show. Um, so we're logging through service portal. Typically on the right-hand screen, we will keep uh, the test protocol that we're currently operating under. So we're showing here the Volta test protocol, um, one of our typical, one of our test packages yep. uh, where we'll test Volta. Um, really important that you can see this throughout the cage. Last one, mentioned a couple of times that we can control radio. Um, so we have a very simple monitor here that will show us what the active networks are inside the cage and also the relative signal quality that we have in here. And it's a really quick overview. So we can look up at any point in time and say, where are we at? Are we in a good coverage, in a bad coverage? And it doesn't match our expectations. If we keep moving around, so we keep a number of um, devices running permanently on the desk. Um, we try to have as many different modem modules, as many different modem manufacturers as we possibly can active. Um, so this is a constantly changing radio environment. On the right-hand side is our customer desks. You want to get in, you want to get set up, you want to get testing, you want to maximize your eight hours in here. So these desks are designed for you to just come in. So they're keyboard, mouse, monitors, everything ready to go. If you're traveling internationally, you don't want to bring big, heavy power supplies, right? So these are heavy. So we provide some power supplies here. Okay, should we uh, run a test case and show how, how it looked like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, really simple demo today. Um, we can obviously do a lot more complicated things with the setup we have here. But we mentioned earlier that we can, we can teleport, right? Okay. So one of the really fundamental test cases that we do, and we do it all the time with customers because it's so critically important, is at what level is my device going to deregister from the network, right? How bad a signal quality can I get to before my device falls off the network? And it's really critical to understand that because you never know where your device might be. A test device here, which is currently connected to the 24008 network, this is Telenor Sweden. It's telling us we're on CAD M um, and we've got our reference signal quality here so about minus 72. Quite good quality though. It's pretty good quality in here at the moment absolutely. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start reducing the signal quality inside the cage okay so we're going to go from full strength and we're going to start decreasing it and we're going to just keep an eye on the signal quality on the test device and see okay what happens. So we'll start the test up. So what we're doing here is we're, we're software controlling the network uh, and we're bringing the level of the Telenor Sweden signal quality in here down by 5 dB. And as we see now, we started at around about what, minus 66, minus 70 dB. And now we're down to minus 91, minus 98. If we hit somewhere around about minus 140, I would expect the device to start to fail. So in the software here, what I can do is I can bring Telenor Sweden down. I can bring Telenor Norway up and we can see, okay, as you approach the border, this is where you'll do a handover. You can expect to have maybe 20 or 30 seconds where you've got no coverage. 
and then your device automatically recovers. Okay, cool. We can replicate that and we can maybe tune your device so it has less downtime or what that might mean. Um, but we can replicate that in the real world. We can bring that into the lab and we can replicate that scenario. Let's see what we can provide outside the cage. We've got a second workstation here, uh, which allows us to run testing from outside. And there are a couple of reasons why you might want to do that. Some of it's for automation purposes, but some of it is you don't want to have anything inside the cage that's interfering with the testing. So this is our electronics workstation. Oftentimes devices might come in that need some work before they're ready to be tested. They might need debug ports, they might need interfaces, they might just need to be reassembled from shipping. Nothing major, but some hand tools, the common things you'll find in an electronics workbench. The second thing we do here is sim testing. Um, so oftentimes sim testing doesn't require you to be in the cage um, and we need a little bit more specialized equipment that we don't want to keep inside the cage. So um, magnification for MFF2s, that sort of thing. But um, we have some specialty sim testing equipment in this rack as well. Our goal here is to be as flexible as possible. We don't want to be wasting time running around moving equipment from here and here and here. Um, so we the things that we need the most, we have out and easily within hand's reach at all times. Um, if we have specialty testing, we've got other equipment that's not out at the moment. Um, but again, come into the lab, maximize your time in the test facility and get the most out of it. That's what we want to do. Besides these desks, we have a conference table. Uh, we have a big screen. Yeah. So what were you using that for? Right. So if you come in and test, you might bring some engineers or the people who are doing the testing, right? The As much as important as the testing is, the report. What happens? How did the testing go? Yeah. Right. And then what are the next steps? So typically what we'll do is we'll spend a day testing. And then we'll bring everybody together around the conference table and the big screen. We'll bring the signal logs in, the test protocols, the results, and then we can walk through the, the report with you and say, this is what happened. This is good. This is bad. This is what you need to work on. Um, and this is what the next steps are. You can then go away, fix your bugs, whatever that might be, improve your optimization, and then come back for another test session in the future where we can go through the protocol again. And yeah, your results are as you expect them to be. I don't think there is any IoT developer out there who wouldn't uh, love to have this facility available to them. And it's it's been amazing what we've been able to do already in such a short amount of time. Um, the capabilities, we're just scratching the surface now. Um, every day I'm coming in and we're building new tools, new capabilities, new automations, new improvements, new base stations, improvements all over the place. And it's, it, it's only going to get better from here on in how to get access. As a customer, you go to account manager and, and request access. So we always start up with a startup meeting. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, the startup meeting is really important um, because everybody's hardware is different. And in this case, I'm not the, de the designer, I'm not the developer, right? So I need to know what you've got. I need to know what it's capable of and I need to know what your expectations are. We are extremely proud and, and uh, excited about our new test facility. And it's really going to help our customers uh, to, to test their devices. And it's been overwhelming how a lot of interest we have. <laughs> so we're, we're, the line in the queue is quite long. Yeah, and getting longer every day. To be able to do testing in, uh, in advance and save time and money and make sure that they don't ship thousands of devices that will not work properly uh, when they hit the market. Yeah, so it's about reliability, right? It's about long-term stability of devices and reliability and confidence in what you are deploying. Thank you so much for watching this tour. Please contact your account manager. See you soon in the lab.